what's up guys welcome back to the channel i've been saying i'm going to do an update on the jeep we just got the 25.6 chassis certified so let's look at all the details on that There's no doubt this thing looks absolutely sick like it is right now. The RC component skinnies in the front, zero backspace and wheels in the back, the radials. So the top, this used to be a sunroof Jeep. They sent the skin for the top to get rid of that. But with the black top, the black bumper, black wheels with the burgundy color, I think it looks really sick like it is. Even though this wasn't kind of in the plan, they just sent us this stuff for fit up. So I've got all this stuff back together just to kind of make it look like a finished piece. Still got to do uh, the carbon and stuff in the back area and do the door panels and somewhat mock up the Lexan. But after that, it's pretty much ready to go back to them after years of it being here i know it's been a long build but there's been a lot of changes and i think it's it's come out awesome up to this point so let's open the hood and i don't have a hood stop i've been using a broom well it's not here right now i'll just hold it up and show you but looking under here we have skeletonized the shock towers now these are still the factory location shock towers the sheet metal here that you see in between those gussets that is actually the factory shock tower so the suspension is technically in the factory location for the front if they was to get in any races where the rules required that the k member is completely removable and I might have mentioned that in another video, but you know, it unbolts just like a factory K member. Actually up here, we've got a tube adapter, and then it's got the brackets that bolt in the factory locations on the frame. So still comes off just like the factory K member did, but it's a full tubular K member with Mincer front shocks, spindle mount wheels, uh, we've got TBM brakes for it, which are not on here right now. We just didn't put them on for mock-up. But Joey did most of this. He did an excellent job on laying the K-member out and making it super versatile and stuff. Let me find a prop for this hood because I'm going to climb in there and show you the underneath too. Okay, now we got our professional hood prop there. The floor broom. Now I can kind of show you. We got these taped off. These are the hammer concepts and designs, adjustable strut cups, so they can run the ride height up and down within reason without messing with the preload of the springs. Firewall wall is stock location. This is something we kind of did way back. Probably gonna redo it to something a little bit cleaner, but might leave it as well i don't know what they'll want to do with that as far as their plan for that area of the firewall all this stuff on the front now i've covered this in videos before on this thing but i'm gonna do just an overview of everything right now but this is the factory piece on the front that holds the hood latch and the grill area and we just kind of cut all this away you can see where part of the core support is still here and just supported it up where this would still work still incorporate all the factory plastics and stuff 
but it would still mount the fender. We've got a little tab here and a piece down there that if you can see, probably can't, but that holds the bottom part of the fender here, the bumper, lower portion of the headlight. So all that still works just like factory. Got under view of it. That's kind of how the K member and stuff lays out. The RC components, spindle mount wheels, whenever they decide to go two wheel drive. Me and Skip discussed it was just the best option just to go all out with the front, do spindle mount and uh, the struts from Mincer, you know, all the good stuff. So let's talk about the roll cage. When they originally brought this Jeep to us, it was going to be four wheel drive, it was going to be heavy, and so that's why we started laying this chassis out for 25.6. Now with 25.6, that's good to 5,000 pounds and 750. So that's, that's kind of how everything started out. So from my earlier videos, you know, we laid out the main part of the cage, the A-pillar, the dash bar, the main hoop, the rocker bars, and pretty much had all that stuff in and it sit for a while and then we started doing the back half this jungle gem of bars here and joey designed most of this and laid it out he did a really good job there but we got all this cut out and just started working our way back before doing anything forward of the main hoop and then recently uh, in the past six months, we've pretty much finished out everything. Now, after putting this thing on the scale, just like it is right now, it weighs, I think, just under 1,700 pounds in its trim right now. That's with the doors on and everything. So when the inspector was here, we asked him about double certifying this thing because obviously 25.6 is only good 750 to the quarter. Well, this thing's gonna be way faster than that. But with all the bars that's in here, this could technically certify to a 25.2, which is down into the six second range. But unfortunately you can't put two certifications on a cage. It either has to be one or it has to be the other. So because it started off as 25.6, that's what we had it certified as. So pretty much every bar that is in a 25.6 is also in a The 25.6, you have this X between the main hoop. You have this annoying little gusset here that they make you put between the door X brace and the A pillar on both sides. And I'm trying to think what else. I think pretty much those are the only two extra bars that are required on the 25.6. Obviously, uh, Several of the bars are a lot thicker, or the diameter is bigger. But besides that, you pretty much have the same gauge. And that's what I tell people a lot of times. I was speaking to a guy on the phone uh, yesterday, matter of fact, and he was asking some questions. And if you look at the diagram to all of the 25.5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or 6, all of them are pretty much the same layout. Some of them have a few extra gussets, some of them have maybe one or two extra bars that's required, but the layout is pretty much the same. You just have to pay attention to the bar thicknesses and the rules. Now, uh, one thing I did run into on Grow Barm is 
anything. I don't think square tube is allowed on the way it might be I have to look but square tube is only allowed down to a certain time and then you have to do round tube molly so there's not people look at these books and they they get overwhelmed but there's not a lot of rule differences there's just a couple rule differences that you have to pay attention to so this all worked out really good though uh, we got stock floor in this thing up in the driver compartment anyway because originally this was going to have a transfer case and all that stuff in there but obviously now it's not but it still worked out better just to leave the floor in here i mean they would save a little bit of weight going sheet metal but this eliminates a lot of work you know keeps it more factory looking and you know i think it'll it'll work out good like this so here we got the number nine seat bar. I'm just gonna go over a few little things. That worked out good because right through that hole, that lines right up with the two A bar. I'll see if I can get under this thing and show y'all how we kind of lined everything up. So if you can see right there, we have the two A bars, a bend at the end of each one, and they weld into the factory frame rails there. And then our six A and B bars come down from the side. We put them down at an angle so we could get them closer to being on plane with the K member and everything like that, giving plenty of room for the transmission in the future. It worked out great because the two A bars, if you can see right there, go right along with the bottom of the floor. And we was able to weld them pretty much the whole length of the floor right there, which worked out really, really nice. Because even though this Jeep is uh, got them big boxed in looking frame rails they're technically not solid frame rails they're just you know overlapped sheets of metal that make a square so they don't technically count as the two a bars and they have to be the round tube molly there you can kind of see how they run down and we have several braces going to them right there off the four link brackets The gusting here is still required, even though you have this one here. So it's gussets stacked on top of gussets. Roof section is pretty standard. That's what you're gonna see in any of your 25, two, three, one, double diagonal with gussets front and back at the corners. Yeah, we took the time to sand all this tubing because the doors, we didn't really, but all the small pieces, it's just easier just to belt sand it with the sander we've got back there because you don't know where it's going to cut, where you're going to weld, all that. So all of it is sanded. It just makes it easier to not have to go back and sand the spot later. Again, these are factory doors we've took everything out of. They are probably just about as light as a fiberglass door. They, they weigh absolutely nothing. They're kind of, you feel like you're gonna bend them when you open them because the spring there is so tight when you open it and there's no door structure. But we're gonna put carbon panels over here. We've already got the metal bent for that and enough lip here we just got to drill the holes so going back to this back half which i've showed you guys a lot of this but i'm just gonna 
say it all in this one video. So we cut the frame reel off there, plated it, and that's where we tied in the four link brackets. The four link brackets are hammer concepts and designs. He's also the one who built this rear for us. It's also his anti-roll bar in there. Pretty long four link bars, should do pretty good. The hatch here, look we fixed it. It used to say four wheel drive, now we made a two. Have to hold this thing, it'll go to the roof because we've also cut all the weight out of that. We still have to do the parachute mount out the back, you know, something where they can push the Jeep around. Got our mock-up shocks in there based on the length they told us. There's that rear end from a hammer. Looking from the back. Might have to adjust those anti-roll bar end links just a little bit. Depending on what their ride height ends up being. They could still go up a good bit. If they wanted to drop the ride height or get a shorter shock. But all that stuff's simple stuff to do at the very end. TBM brakes, I said we got them for the front, get the big boys for the back. Got a couple sets of wheel tubs in the back, one small set and one large set. Not 100% sure which set I'm gonna put in here. I'll just have to kind of see how it lays out, make me some templates, but that's another thing that has to be done. Get the wheel tubs in here and then make the carbon sheets to box in all this stuff, clean it up. Now all this stuff, people see all this jungle gym of bars and stuff and they think that this is part of this cage certification. It's technically not. The only bars in this section here that is part of the cage certification is these and these. The rest of the bars are kind of acting as the footprint for these bars to land and the suspension and stuff. But as far as SFI goes, that part, that inside box right here forward of the main hoop, this bar and this bar on each side, that's the only ones that really matter as far as the SFI goes, as far as your sticker. And there's a picture of the sticker. You see they don't have a stamp out for 25.6. So what they do is they put the camera won't focus on it. This 25.6, 5,000 max pound weight, they'll put that sticker on first and then they'll put this sticker over top of it. where the two A's come up through the floor. The rear cross member there worked out good. We could weld it into the floor there. And then we did like a secondary rear cross member to kick back and get where the four link brackets are, where they tie in. And you see there's a bunch of tie-ins right there.
Something I forgot to mention, the wishbone setup is also the hammer concepts and designs slider. The same stuff that we use on our F-body wishbone kits. So this has got the latest and greatest as far as non-grease style uh, slider, which is awesome to not have to deal with the nasty grease on your chassis and stuff. So. I'm excited to get this thing to this point. I'm surprised Demon hasn't put us on one of those chassis gel Facebook pages yet. Because this thing, like I said, it's been here for years. But those guys, Nathan and Skip, they're great guys. They kind of understand the way it goes. And we've just been working on it here and there when we have time. And I'm just happy it, it's turned out so awesome. And I look forward to getting the carbon finished and dropping it off with those guys and letting them put a billet hemi with twin 88s or whatever they have planned for it i'll try to do some videos kind of on laying the carbon out maybe in this thing sometimes i'm i'm kind of hesitant to do videos on stuff that i'm kind of just flying by the seat of my pants i don't have a ton of experience laying out carbon and doing all this stuff besides on my personal car over there that's pretty much it we don't do a whole lot of sheet metal work or finishing out interior and stuff like that so sometimes i don't want to show you guys how much i suck at stuff i just want to rough my way through it and learn from it and then maybe show you the next time when i'm a little bit better so thank you guys for watching rock solid motorsports.com is our website check it out we always got stuff in stock we ship stuff fast Maybe not quite as fast as Amazon, but some stuff even faster. So if you need something, especially for F-Body, check us out. We've got stuff for Mustangs. We've got new products coming out for the new Edge over there. We just, we're slow about it, but they're going to get there. You know, tanks, different delete panels, uh, even some roll cages. We've got some stuff figured out for that. So thank you guys for watching. Subscribe, and we'll see you next time.